But line 18, I would stay out of it if I was the IRS. You know, get your money. It's got to be an easier way to get your money than from the divorce. Uh, uh, two people in the divorce. Or so. Any case, line 18, penalty on early withdrawal of savings. So when you have the form 1099 interest or form 1099 OID, you, re uh, you received will show the amount of any penalty you were charged. So if you have interest income or dividend income, your financial institution will typically be required to issue you a 1099 INT or OID, which we talked about in prior presentations on the income side of things. And if you were subject to penalties, then they have to give you that penalty item, which may result in being able to deduct up here on line 18. So it's a pretty straightforward, easy deductible item or easy identifiable item to put into the data input. You don't see it too often because hopefully you and your clients aren't us uh, being subject to penalties or having to pull money out early where they would be subject to penalties. But there it is. If you see it, it should be pretty straightforward. Lines 19A, 19B, and 19C alimony paid. Line 19A. So if you made payments to or for your spouse or former spouse under a divorce or separation agreement entered into on or before December 31st, 2018, there's the cutoff date, you may be able to take this deduction. So you can't take a deduction for alimony payments you made to or for spouse if you entered into your divorce or separation agreement after December 31st, 2018, or if you entered into the agreement on or before December 31st, 2018, and the agreement was, was changed after December 31st, 2018 to expressly provide that alimony received is not included in your former spouse's income. Use tax topic 452 or see publication uh, 504. So obviously divorce agreements that happened before this time then, then had to deal with that issue of should it be alimony or child support, which had a bigger uh, tax implication. And I would think that would lead to more confusion, you know, so you'd like things to be as kind of clear as possible so you can come up to to the agreement. And then after that date, then the divorce agreements don't have that thing that's kind of clouding clouding the, the scenario in terms of, well, what will the tax implications be and whatnot? So uh, I would think that would lead to uh, more people feeling like they're, they understand the agreement better going forward. But line 19c on line 19c enter the month and year of your original divorce or separation agreement that relates to this deduction for alimony so you got to put it in there so that they have the information on the irs side so they're confident that this whole alimony thing is from an agreement before the cutoff date